Welcome back to another edition of All Chiefed Up, where we do Kansas City Chiefs news, analysis, and more. Today, we're going to be talking about the top five keys to beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this weekend. As of right now, they still haven't set where this game is going to be played at, but hopefully by the time this video drops, we might know where this game's taking place. Mike, let's go ahead and jump into the first key. Okay, so key number one, I think Chiefs Kingdom will agree with this one. I think it's uh, Patrick Mahomes, man. He's got to look better. Um, he did not look good against Indianapolis. Uh, if you go back and watch the film, even in some of the the good parts of the season against the Cardinals and some of the times against the Chargers, he's still missing open wide receivers. He's still pressing a little bit. He's not exactly taking what the defense is giving him. Um, he's still eyeing down certain people. He's still forcing the ball to Kelsey in certain situations. Um, yeah, he just... He's got to get a little better here, man. It's time for Patrick Mahomes to grow up and step into that next step of his elite quarterback play, or he's starting to get stale, and you're starting to get people to argue that, hey, Josh Allen's better. Hey, Jalen Hurts is better. Two is better. Like We're tired of hearing that, but Mahomes has got to pick it up. He's got to do it. Right. We're we're all still stuck in the last couple of years when he was just shredding everybody, you know. We've seen what he can do and we saw it on a weekly basis. So we still keep that in mind. But a lot of people are right here right now. And a lot of right here right now, recently Mahomes has been very stale. And he's not looking comfortable in the offense. He's making bad decisions. I mean, it it just looks like a different Mahomes sometimes. And we've all seen that. We saw it last week. But yeah, you're right. Number one key has to be for him to step up, get back to form, hit open receivers, take the check downs when he has to. And when he does get those chances at the long ball, stop overthrowing everybody. Yeah, I think he's self-aware. He said it in his presser the other day that he's starting slow. He's got to get better. He knows. He had a whole offseason to work on how to beat this cover two. Where's it at? He's not doing it. The yeah. Colts are even dropping back into cover two and 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 confusing them the other day. Yeah. So we're we're it's never it's a never ending cycle here. Mahomes is it's time to grow up. It's time to figure this out. And Tampa is not a defense where you can come out and press on them. Um, they you have to keep in mind Tampa's the first defense that dropped into that cover two shell and destroyed Mahomes. They started that whole thing. So you don't think that they're going to forget that. And like you said, he's still struggling with it. He struggled with it last week in Indy. It's like the bane of his existence. It's that simple. Just cover two, the high cover two shell. Uh, yeah. He's got to beat it, man. He's got to show that he can beat that on a consistent basis. That way defenses will bring them back down, and then we can start opening up some of those deep balls he likes to throw. Yeah, so look, Rodgers, uh, they beat Tampa Bay in Tampa Bay last week. Uh, that Tampa Bay defense was all over Rodgers and all over his receivers all day. I want to say Rodgers completed 27 passes, I believe, and I bet 95% of them were just dinks and dunks. He took what they give him. That's what he had to do. He put his defense in a chance to win the game, and his defense stepped up there, prevented the two-point conversion, and they won the game. That is a mature quarterback that took what the defense gave him and said, hey, if this is what you're giving me, this is how I got to beat you. Mahomes has to get into that same mentality and stop trying to just be like, look, I'm Superman. I'm throwing it deep every time. You can't do it. Uh, yeah. Mahomes has got to, to get it going and take a play, you know, take a page out of Rogers' playbook there and take what they give you this week. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Mahomes has got to learn that every game can't be won by just hitting that deep ball over and over again and being a big highlight reel. One thing that would really help Mahomes is if he'd quit exiting clean pockets. I've noticed that he keeps running out of clean pockets. He gets a little foot happy too early. Uh, the offensive line, which we're going to talk about in the next key, are giving him enough time. He needs to stay in there, make those passes, and just like you said, take what the defense has given him. One more stat before we jump into number two. Mahomes is hanging onto the ball 2.8 seconds per pass play. That is very high in comparison. In comparison, Brady gets rid of the ball a half a second faster. A half a second faster. Mahomes is only faster than these quarterbacks. And listen to the quality of quarterback you're about to hear. Daniel Jones, Marcus Mariota, Russell Wilson, who struggled all year long, Lamar Jackson, he runs the ball a lot. Carson Wentz and Justin Fields. Those are the only quarterbacks hanging onto the ball longer than Mahomes. That's not a good list. This is a league where defenses are getting faster. They're starting to play the shell. They're starting to not let these athletic wide receivers beat them. Mahomes has got to get the ball out. His decision-making has got to be faster. He's got to be on the money. On to key number two. 
The offensive line has to continue to play at a high level. What what did you just say, Steve? The offensive line has to continue to play at a high level? Yes, exactly. All of you guys have been talking about the offensive line, how bad they are, how bad they look. And the fact of the matter is, they're the number two ranked offensive line in the entire NFL right now by PFF grades. Um, they said that the weak link on the team is Trey Smith. That's not who everybody's been critiquing. They've been critiquing Orlando Brown. What's funny about that is Orlando Brown took most of his heckling in the last game against the Colts. But by PFF grades, Orlando Brown had his best week in week three against the Colts, allowing only two pressures on 47 dropbacks. Yeah, so look, um, we kind of alluded to that in the Chargers game. There were tons of times that Andrew Wiley kind of got a little bit of a uh, some some heat, and everybody said, hey, Andrew Wiley calls – you know, some pressure on Mahomes there. We said it time and time again, when you watch the film, him and Trey Smith were having communication issues. And there was a lot of times it was Trey Smith's fault. That stat makes perfect sense right now. Um, they're coming up the middle a lot. I seen um, Creed Humphrey take a block and just let the guy run right by him. Like some of the guys, you know, it, it's, it's obvious that you can't win every rep, but like, we're just too focused on Orlando Brown because chiefs kingdom wants to hate on Orlando Brown. They, they point to the one that he he fell down. The dude got tripped. Our own player tripped him. He didn't just fall down. Right. So everybody wants to talk about the Chiefs offensive line being bad. Shaq Barrett even came out and said that he sees no difference in the offensive line the Chiefs currently have and the one that he destroyed in the Super Bowl. Think about that for a second. That's complete disrespect. For a number two ranked offensive line only behind the Philadelphia Eagles, he tried to make that comment and said that they're going to have a coming out party this weekend on defense. So check this out. Brett Veach and the Chiefs went out, constructed this entire offensive line based on what happened in that Super Bowl game. We got absolutely demolished in that Super Bowl game. They started the rebuilding process, and basically, besides Andrew Wiley, it's all new. And they look really good. Like you said, they're number two in the league. They take a lot of heat, but it's kind of undeserved. Patrick Mahomes even kind of puts them in bad situations. Um, other than that, though, this this offensive line is really good. So for Shaq Barrett to come out and say something like that, that needs to get under their skin. That needs to be bulletin board material, and they need to come out and just wallop that defensive line and just show them who's boss out there, man. Right. So all the critique on the offensive line. Trey Smith has been the weak link. He's yet to score out of the 50s in PFF grade this year. They say that he's the weak link. Uh, Orlando Brown tends to be the strong link here they say that he actually does good but what's funny is like you said everyone's so you know pigeonholed in on orlando brown because of the contract talks and everything else and they've decided they don't like the guy and he's not worth this money that now he just sucks completely uh but they're not watching the games yeah everybody wants to talk about him uh tripping over jody fortson's foot and falling down one play and oh he let the guy right by him he literally got tripped by his own player like we're just looking for a reason to throw orlando brown under the bus it's yeah. it's absurd. And it, like that's another thing. And they're going to say, oh, well, it's because they're good at, you know, rush blocking, but they're not good in pass pro. This is also not true because they're the number ninth ranked team in pass protection. So there's no way that you can keep continuing to talk about how bad the offensive line is. And they're the one that's causing all this pressure. Why don't we shift that blame back to the play calling and back to your quarterback not getting rid of the ball? back to your quarterback running out of clean pockets and back to your quarterback refusing to take the shots at who's open instead of just waiting for something big to happen. That's where we need to focus at. And I know it sucks uh, to, to say that about Patrick Mahomes because we all love him uh, and we know he's capable of being the best quarterback in the league, if not ever. But, you know, he's not perfect. He's not 100% perfect. Nobody's perfect. And we have to see that for what it is and call it out. Dude, football is a beautiful game. It's the ultimate team sport. Um, it is all those things. When the play calling becomes too um, pass happy, the defenses know they don't have to respect the run. They can send people. They can send their front four, pin their ear back, go get them. Um, that causes the offensive line. They can be good, but nobody's perfect every play. And if they're just all out coming at you every play, there's going to be times that you don't give up, you know, perfect pockets or you, you give up some pressure that's going to happen when they are giving up pretty good pockets Mahomes running out of it making it look worse than it is it all goes hand in hand it's all got to get together it's all got to be cleaned up 
Hopefully this week they'll get it together. You don't want to be one-dimensional with him. You want to slow down that defensive line. You want to slow down those linebackers and those corners. Mahomes has to stay in the pocket, hold those corners with his eyes. He has to get in the, you know, when he gets out of the pocket, fine. But make sure there's a reason you're getting out of the pocket, not just because, hey, uh, my first option's gone, let me run. So right. I feel like Mahomes panics a lot. He's got to settle in and trust this offensive line. Right, so I'm glad you brought up them being pass-happy in the offense. Everyone knows that, and that's why we're sticking with this as a key to a win. So our third key is going to be that we have to get a run game going and not the Andy Reid saying we need to get the run game established because we all know that's just him talking. They literally have to get a run game going. We saw the abysmal stats in the last game. There were no rushing stats for the Chiefs. It was it was pathetic. It's almost embarrassing how bad it was. We have to get a run game going, Mike. And and to me, uh, from an outside perspective and just trying to look at it in a different light, I feel like Andy Reid's rotating these guys in and out too much. I don't think anyone's getting into a rhythm. I don't care if you want to stick with Clyde or you want to stick with McKinnon or you want to stick with Pacheco. Pick one. Who's better for this situation, right? Who Who's better against the Buccaneers? Who do you think... Uh, can do the most damage pick that guy let them play for a few series in a row and get into a rhythm changing these guys out over and over again it just it looks like no one's getting into a rhythm to me and I think that's part of the whole offense being out of rhythm because it's just like you know a domino effect yeah bring back Rojo maybe he wants to beat up on his own team I don't know but to your point yes we have to get players in and get them into a rhythm it takes quarterbacks it takes running backs it takes everybody a little bit of time to adjust to the game speed, to, to take a few hits, you know, get their blood flowing, get going, getting some rhythm. They don't get that. Clyde gets one or two carries. Clyde goes sets on the bench for 20 minutes, and then Clyde comes back, and we expect him to do something great. Clyde's right. tired, or Clyde's stiff from, you know, having to be over the exercise bike because he ain't playing. But the point is, yeah, we have to get the run game going. Um, it, It's as simple as that. We talk about the offensive line. We all know this offensive line is better run blockers than pass blockers. Let them do it. And and I know people will say, hey, Clyde's just missing gaps. He's doing this. He's doing that. There's this picture that come out this week where Clyde got stuck behind, you know, trying to go in between the B gap. And his his hole was the A gap. And Mahomes is sitting there pointing, you know. He's doing the whole, you know, Tyron Matthew thing where he's pointing into the hole. And it's like – Okay, maybe Clyde missed the hole, maybe he don't, but Clyde's got good field vision. You got to just keep doing it over and over. But that's that's something you're going to run into when you start doing all these zone blocking schemes rather than just like lining up and punching it down somebody's throat. You're going to you're going to miss things like that. Yeah, the sad thing is is they didn't stray away much from the RPO like we thought they were going to do. I really wish they would, but that's still what they're doing and this causes a delay in the handoff. It causes a slow a uh, slow play development. And that's what causes a lot of this. I mean, if they would just get out there and smash mouth run the ball, your your running back knows where they're going. Your offensive line knows what hole to open up. And it's just, you know, it's just there. But that's not what happens. We've all seen it. And one thing I want to lump into this running game is the screen passing game. We could be utilizing Clyde. Clyde is actually one of the top receivers on our team. And, and very low key. This year, he's one of the top receivers on our team. He was five receptions on five targets against the Colts, uh, but we didn't continue to go to him. And, and we also have Pacheco, who's a great pass catching back. We've seen it during uh, off season. We've seen it in camp. We've seen it in the preseason. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, but they haven't even attempted to go to him. Uh, they've got to get these running backs more involved, be it the run game. We got to get it established or, or if you know, if you're having trouble with that, let's, let's throw the ball to him. Let's do some screen game. Dude, that's been a knock so far. It seems like time and time again this season, in this early season, the coaching staff's not putting players in the positions that they need to be in to make plays. Um, right. You're not seeing Sky Moore do anything. You're not seeing them being used. You're not seeing Juju utilized the right way. You're really not seeing MVS utilized the right way. Um, we're not seeing Clyde utilized the right way. Like, there's so many things over and over again. We got an offensive line that's a road grader offensive line We won't line up and just run the ball down their throats. We want to get cute with everything and delay everything and dance in the backfield for an hour and a half. It's not going to work. Like, why don't we use these players in the best way possible and let them work? Let let Pacheco get in there and catch some screens, man. 
Get him the ball in the open yeah. field. That's what we drafted him for. Do the same thing with Sky Moore. Get him the ball in space. Dude, we watched him just a few weeks ago catch a ball. It looked like he was going to get hit, and he squirted through everybody for about 13 extra yards. It was insane to watch. This dude is hard to hit. Like, get them the ball. Yeah, for a coaching staff that says, hey, we have to establish this run game, did you know they're 23rd in the league in rushing attempts and only 22nd in the league in total rushing offense? That is not going to cut it, Andy Reid. Like, it's got to get better than that. If you're one-dimensional, it's going to be a long season. Key number four to winning against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is going to be to create some quarterback pressure on Tom Brady. You've heard over and over again lately that the Buccaneers have a depleted offensive line and things like that. Granted, it's not as good as last year, but they're actually ranked fifth in the league right now, uh, according to some websites. So they're not a pushover offensive line. And you always know that Tom Brady's going to get rid of that ball fast when he does get pressure. So we really need to create pressure. So this front four is going to have to get there and they have to get there fast. And the corners are going to have to win their matchups early. That way these guys can get home on Tom Brady because we do have to hit him some uh, to disrupt this offense. Yeah, I think this is a week. Spags has been experimenting a lot with zone coverage more, more and more. He started last year. He, we're seeing it this year. I think this is more of a, a week where we need to line up, use the size of our corners and hit them in the mouth right off the bat. Use Jalen Watson right up on the line and let him just beat the crap out of some of these wide receivers. You know Brady's getting rid of the ball. He averages 2.4 seconds on pass plays. That is really fast. He's barely taking his three-step drop, and the ball's gone. So you've got to cover these receivers early. Our defensive line, they've done really good this, this year so far. We've already got 10 sacks. I know a few of those are from our secondary. I want to say Legarius Sneed's probably got two. I think, uh, I don't know, there's a few others. I can't think of them off the top of my head. But still, the front four of Spags is creating pressure this year, and we thought that was going to be a problem. So far, it's not been. It, it's not been that big of a problem. So we just need a, to tighten this up here a little bit and get after Brady, man. Like, Brady's starting to get a little older. You can start to make him feel a little uncomfortable. He's maybe losing a little trust in his offensive line. It's a possibility. And he also not as trusting in his receivers right now. He is going to have Mike Evans back. Chris Godwin's still out injured. Uh, so they actually went out and signed Cole Beasley. And, you know, Cole Beasley is the receiver for Tom Brady. Is If he's not a Julian Edelman type receiver, I don't know who is. So you got to watch out for that, too, because he'll be hitting them on those quick slants and eating us alive on little five-yard passes. Yeah, you're right. He will. He, he takes the quick stuff all the time. That's what Tom Brady's known for. Uh, I do have another stat that's kind of crazy with Tom Brady, you wouldn't think. Um, it's a stat called the aggressiveness. So it's it's a it's a stat designed to see how many times a quarterback will throw a ball into a tight space and they define a tight space where the defenders within one yard of the receiver tom brady has a 15.5 on that which means he is forcing the ball into really tight coverage right now um on the other side mahomes only has an 11.9 which means mahomes is it, it kind of works to the other stats Mahomes isn't really throwing his receivers open or throwing the ball in tight spaces Mahomes is only throwing the ball if they're wide open like he's just not giving a receiver a chance I don't know he does like to throw it in a double and triple coverage sometimes yeah he will get you know laser focused on somebody and do it like Juju in that last play but the point is is Tom Brady will force the ball in really tight so these DBs need to be prepared for that just because you're all over somebody don't think Tom Brady's not gonna try to you know thread the needle on you like and he can do Tom it Brady. we've yeah, all he seen can do it. it yeah he's 674 passing yards this year he's 22nd in the nfl he only has three passing touchdowns right now tied for 19th he's taken six sacks on the year so i mean their offense does look pretty stagnant to be honest right now but if there's one week where we know they're going to come out and click on all cylinders it's going to be against us just because that's the way it always works out and i would so just like to point something out to be real prepared quick. man I would like to point something out real quick. Go ahead. You just said Tom Brady had been sacked six times this season. Patrick Mahomes, he's only been sacked twice. He's tied for 31st in the league on sacks. So how about that for your offensive line? Dude, the offensive line is not as bad as people's making it out to be. It's just not. All right, let's move on to the last key to winning the game against the Bucks on Sunday. Um, guys, we've seen it time and time again. If, if Andy Reid comes out with an offensive game plan, and it doesn't work, we see no adjustments. It's like watching 
uh, him ram his head into a wall over and over and over. We'll go to the half. We'll come back out and do the same thing over and over. And that's what leads to these stagnant, terrible, hard to watch games like this Colts game. So guy, all we're saying for this fifth key is you have to make in game adjustments. If it's not working, if you come out and your game plan is not working, you got to switch it up. Reed, you cannot just be stubborn. Right. So look, if you want to come out and you want to try to establish the run, like we said, and let's say Tampa Bay is they're up to the challenge, man. They get really stiff on us and boom, boom, boom. Clyde looks five carries and he ain't got any yards again. And the offensive line's actually hitting their assignments, you know, have the ability to switch, but adjust it to something, you know, of similar importance. So utilize your screen game. Now that's still going to slow them down as the same as a run would. Um, You've got to be able to adjust a little bit. We know these coaches know how to do this. Andy Reid is one of the best coaches in football, but why they're being stubborn right now, I have no idea. He has a tendency, instead of adjusting, like you just said, maybe run game's not working, let's go to a short screen game when we need to you know, open things up deep and things like that. Instead of making these simple adjustments, it's like he tries to get more and more cute. And let's, well, let's try some trick plays like, dude, that's not the way to go. Let's, let's be smart here. We, like you said, he's one of the best offensive coaches to ever be in the NFL. And we're out here trying to tell this guy that he needs to adjust in games where it's your, your game plan's not working. Like, is there just a, like a stubbornness there that just don't go away? You ought, you kind of feel stupid to be like, Hey, I'm on a, a random video on YouTube trying to tell Andy Reid how to run an offense. Like you feel like an idiot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, come on. It's, it's, I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just telling you to, Hey, quit out thinking yourself and quit trying to be so cute and just go back to the basics, go to what works, put your players in positions that they can make plays in and they're best utilized in and just stick to it. And if it gets shut down, try something different. Don't just keep doing it over and over again. These I think they forget that the defenses get paid a lot of money to study and, and and be athletic as well, you know? All I'm asking is that if you're having trouble moving the ball, let's adjust how we're moving the ball and not just quickly go into let's have Tommy Townsend pass the ball for 10 yards on fourth down. Like, this kind of stuff is what I'm talking about. Or when we have straight up third and ones on a good first drive of the game, let's just get that one yard instead of trying a jet sweep to McCole Hardman or, or something that is unnecessary. Like I'm tired of seeing that stuff. Even in this last game against the Colts, the offense was struggling a little bit. Everyone's seen it, but we also saw how they could, you know, get out of that funk, but it just wasn't happening. And what do they do? They go to like a freaking statue of Liberty play or something crazy that made no sense. It got us a whole 10 yards. Like, I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. And Andy Reid's just got to quit trying to outsmart himself. It's insane. Yeah, it's it's, it's weird at times. But again, I don't know. I, I, I trust Andy and them to figure it out. Maybe it's just maybe it's just the newness. Maybe there really is something throwing off the chemistry behind the scenes. We don't know, but they've got to figure it out. They've got to figure it out. They're too much. There's too much wasted potential right now in this offense. I'll put it that way. Okay, so we've knocked out the five keys to victory to beating Tampa Bay. So let's just jump right into our game predictions for the week. Steve, you're up first. What do you got, man? All right, I'm predicting that the Chiefs are going to bounce back off that awful loss to the Colts and get the win this week, 34-17 to against Tampa Bay. I think our defense is going to go ahead and shut them down pretty good. Tom Brady's still going to have a couple touchdowns. It's Tom Brady. But I think for the most part, the defense is going to do what they have to do. And Mahomes is going to have to come out of that funk this week, man. I think he's noticing what's going on and what he knows he's better than how he's been playing. I'm going to say that the MVP of the game is going to be Travis Kelsey, who also is going to have a good bounce back game. I'm looking at 121 yards and two tutties for Travis Kelsey this week. Okay, that's a pretty good score. I'll give you that one. Um. I'm not going to be so optimistic this week, guys. Um, I think there's something going on with this team. I don't know if it's easily corrected in just one week. I think we take our second straight loss here. I'm going to go 27, 24 bucks. I know that's not very popular, but, uh, you know, sometimes there's things bigger than football and maybe Tampa, 
you could say the hurricane's on their mind, but they also could make it as a motivational thing where they're trying to give their home state something to cheer for and to take their mind off of all the devastation. Yeah, so, I mean, and that's going to be the storyline on the entire game on Sunday Night Football. It's all we're going to hear about and how they're playing for the – yeah, you're right. Watch them flags fly. It's Tom Brady, and it's the storyline. Right. So I'm yeah. going to say 27-24. Dang. I'm going to say that, you know – the Bucks Dang squeak it. it out. I'm going to say, Steve is so mad. I'm going to go ahead and say, though, that I'll give a an MVP for the Chiefs anyway. I'm going to say George Karloftis shows up this week. He's been rather quiet. I'm going to give him his first sack of the season this week, and I'm going to give him at least three or four tackles on the ground as well. Um, but, yeah, I think our offense still struggles a little bit. This Tampa Bay defense is for real, and um, I don't know. If we're struggling this bad, I don't know if this is the time we get it going forward. And again, I still think there's something going on with this team, but, uh, yeah, that's going to be my prediction to Steve's I'm, dismay. I can't believe that you, you made me think of that. And that's exactly what's going to happen. They do it every time. Do you remember the Rams game a while back, like a couple years ago? And there was this, a, a whole storyline the whole time about how, what had happened in LA? I don't even know. <laughs> something had gone on there and it's that the, all they talked about. Is and, that the game that we played with, um, LA in Mexico and it was like a shootout? Yes. Okay. I don't remember what happened, but yeah, I know what yeah. you're talking about. There was a whole storyline behind it, and it was, you know, it ended the way it, it should have all good and happy. So, yeah, be prepared for that one, Chiefs Kingdom. Yep. We're going to be the villains this week, guys. <laughs> all right, Chiefs Kingdom. If we missed a key to winning the game on Sunday, make sure to put that down in the comments and we'll talk about it. Thanks for liking, subscribing, hitting that bell to get notifications. Any super thanks over $4.99, and we're going to send you out some keychains and some stickers. We're going to be back at you soon with reactions to the game. Hopefully they're good this time, man. It wasn't that great talking about the game after the Colts game, now was it? No, that wasn't very fun, but hopefully we bounce back this week. I have I have faith. As long as as long as we don't have to fit the storyline of Florida under devastation and Tom Brady and the Bucks are going to help the state get it off their minds and, and have a good uh, night. Oh, it's hey, going to suck. Who's going to be calling the game? Go ahead. Who knows? Who knows? It's Romo. Game. I don't know. I haven't looked yet, but, um, yeah. Hey, in all seriousness though, if there's any chiefs kingdom down there in Florida, man, y'all stay safe, dude. That yeah. hurricane's no lie. I was watching footage today and that thing, that looked pretty crazy, man. Yeah. If you're in Florida, be safe for real. Okay, man, that's going to wrap it up. We'll catch you guys on the flip. See ya. I, 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 I